But they do. You set, um, of course, we start at 9 o'clock tomorrow. Now we hear from Japan. Japan has 17 years in the last, but it's now the power platform. He works with Microsoft as well from Washington DC. And he's going to be sharing the story with us how someone who has spent 17 years in the finance space is finally working with Microsoft and finding a power platform. And that was his problem that no matter the space you have today, in an academic of anywhere, there is one in this new way where you can graduate to and explore the advocate of the government. What is that? What is Messaging and the greeting and welcome address. But now I'm going to start here.
Sure that you don't waste too much time. All right, so I have less than two minutes to convince you in this good time today. And that is what I'm presenting to you this today. The second way of digital transformation. So let's see what we have to talk about here first. Okay, so I'm going to start with this quote, two quotes of mine, and a favorite quote of mine, one from Mary Shudua. Mary Shudua is the CEO of Automation Anywhere. Automation Anywhere is an, is an industry leader in robotic process automation, RPA. And he said, this year, February, on the Reimagine Conference, he said, on-premise technologies, which we won't see as reliable and safe, we soon become legacy technologies. And this points us to something. A lot of people argued that having a server, you know, hosted on your premise, having your own data center seems to be more secure. But the future speaks of this that these things that we trusted in, we believe are secure and safe, it will soon become a legacy technology. And uh, Charles Ramana is the company vice president in Microsoft and is the one in charge of business application, including Power Platform, which is the tool we'll be talking about in this book now. He said, and I quote, from a uh, February event to uh, so much of you, he said, 50% of workplace processes can be automated with today's technologies, and Microsoft Places 5 is the tool. Now, he said this to the business people. Students don't participate in this event. I mean, as, as far as this part of the world is concerned, it's business people that get to know that participate. And he made this announcement that 50% of the workplace processes can be automated using today's technologies. And Microsoft 365 is the tool. As a business person, when I hear this, and I have a lot of manual processes running in my organization, something that comes to my head, okay, I can automate 50% of them. And if someone is coming to me, you should be able to do that. Because it's possible. Meanwhile, you are not able that you are not even aware that this thing is possible. So there's a vision. You need to be aware and you need to know how to do. So for us to further emphasize on this, I would like to take you back to how the world has evolved over the years. And I love this chart history, which shows the generation that we have gone through in terms of innovation and invention for over thousands of years. And here on this chart, we have this. Long, long before we see man's dominance, man's experience, man's needs and wants are after energy and defense. I want to preserve whatever I have, I want to be able to move and transform things, I want to protect myself. So man was able to invent weapon and fire. And then we move here. So that in the issue state, there were a lot of inventions that took place there. Well, we have the wheel, we have the writing, water mill, gunpowder, up to the steam engine before we transition to the industrial revolution. Then something characterized the history stage. This. So something characterized the history stage, which is knowledge. To look at it carefully, between 3,000 BC, writing was formalized. That was when it became the gist that we did again, we did, let's say, a feather, and you have a mixture of chemical, which is called in, and you have a scroll, which is taken from high man. And you put the feather in the bee, and a stripe on the leather. And that includes the result. So writing was formalized, and we started having the nomadic fishes. Which are the results with the Socrates. They were moving from one place to another, reading knowledge to people, transferring wisdom to people by reading the scroll. And it's only the wealthy people that can afford that. That's how the world has transformed. If you are wealthy enough, they can come to you and, and talk to you in the world of wisdom. 
But we show something in 1045 AD when Pretty Press was invented. Not let the people commercialize. It's something in such a way can now be printed in mass and become easier for you to afford one for me. You're able to digest the thought of that person and you're able to build on it. This is the limitation of this one. I can build on it. My thousands of people building on an invention at the same time is one of them to success. That was why we have accelerated the world. So what I'm going to get is that from each state, the world has moved twice. And this movement was driven by knowledge. See the first stage, what right was realized. The second one, when the printing press was invented, how long we have commercialization of knowledge. Then, again, um, the next thing here is this is very first place. Even though knowledge drove the economy, but what we have is called inventive society. The world was very poor. And that's it. If you plot the GDP of the world, and this according to Professor UBC, it's an extrapolation. I'm not going to show you that, but I'm taking this description of the world as an event in society, as an event in an essence. Up to 750 AD, the world was poor. Because we invented the processes, the mechanism, the, you know, the theories, everything trained our patients to a better stage, even the events of that war. Because the inventions, we're going to see how the world has after the social invention, then we saw innovative society, which is the industrial revolution. Innovation is invention plus commercialization. So the moment the world becomes to commercialize the inventions, it becomes an innovation. A good example is what we have there. Steam engine was the invention in 1698. But in the first industrial revolution, there was one driving in the mechanization that time, the locomotives. It was steam engine. That was the invention, but the innovation was mechanization. People were able to produce and manufacture things that could do. Machines that could replace what man can do in one aspect. And people are willing to pay for that. And that one is an innovation. In the second one, you see, and four is here. In the 17th and 18th days, it says, and I quote, if I ask people what it means, they would have say, give me a faster cost. If they report that state to that time, then what do you need? They say, give us a faster bus. Why? Because they cannot afford the car. Why? Because it's very expensive. It takes the rich and wealthy to afford the car. Just the world of choice is manufactured in the same way a car is being manufactured then. Every car is manufactured. They don't make it fast. If you need a car to manufacture everything from the end, it can take six months. Everybody, every employee, their community, their effort, build that same car. But then the first says, and how do the Americans do that? How do they do that? How do they do that? First, electricity. Electricity was the invention in the second industrial revolution. But I'm talking about innovation here. The second one is the theory of economics, mass production. You know which is called economic of scale. You know the unit cost of manufacturing something on a very large scale is cheaper and becomes affordable. Let us have assembly line, let us have production line, let us have all these different lines. So that the moment we're able to manufacture the Etna, a thousand copy, we manufacture the seeds, a thousand copy, you do all those parts of the car in thousands of copies. Then the cost of manufacturing will only be used and the country is affordable for even an average American. That's what happened there. But let us do what is going to happen in the future, which is called the accumulated capacity. Knowledge is going to drive the future for us. And that is going to be the knowledge of latest technologies and tools. And that is where this comes in. And that's going to lead us to the second way. I call it the way one. Way one is the one that experience and enjoy so far. The mechanization, the mass production, the automation, the machine learning, even up to the stage, they are still going one. Way two is going to be more about artificial intelligence.
Decentralization and decentralization of systems. Blockchain is changing the game when it comes to centralizing things or decentralizing systems. I'm going to say a lot of centralization through aggregators, solutions that aggregate partners, aggregate platforms, and everything together. Second, we're going to see democratization of skill. So, you know, say I'm a data analyst, you know, say I'm a microbiologist, and you want to work in the industry, you must have multiple skills, which is where aggregated capability comes in. The skills required for graduate today is no longer the word Excel and PowerPoint. You need to be skillful in power platform tools. We need to hedge over all of us. We're going to see we're also going to see the definition of standards. Standard is, I mean, quality is the moving target because it's technology driven. What was of good quality last year is no longer today. This is why we have different versions of iPhone or smartphones or devices year on year because they are technology driven. So we're going to see the definition of standards and as well as the new level of security. Activities that take longer than the voice, moving from days to minutes, from minutes to seconds, and almost in time. These are the things that are going to characterize the second wave. Different services have enjoyed in the past, have seen improvements. In the quality, in the speed of delivery, the standard, the skill required, and also centralization and decentralization of the systems. Okay, right. So, we don't know the drivers. Maybe I should put it this way. We actually Thank you. 
They offer you remote job, they give you, you know, minimum 40,000, 50,000 US dollars per hour. No job can give you that in Nigeria today. And we work remotely, people are doing that. And that's just cheap labor for them. So, companies that need people to understand that you won't see these guys, they will not work for you. So, it's better to democratize this place and power business users so that they can do that thing themselves. You have manner processes, and you just want platform, you don't need to write any code. But can you automate your process yourself? So, you see why, if you go back, I mean, you go to Italy and say, I can use one PowerPoint and Excel, that doesn't mean anything. Because they want to see, can you do these things? I don't have developers, I want to hire three months, four months, I can't even get one. But what I want to do, someone can achieve with this power platform, but can you do it? If that's what you can do, you can get a job. I want to put you on that platform. And that's why we're here today. Right? So, these are the three things that the skills we are building now will achieve for organizations. Three things. Number one, revenue growth. And that's the value delivery. How can your skill help the organization? To grow their revenue. Number two, cost reduction. How can it help them to reduce costs? Number three, optimize process. How can it make their process more optimal? This is the value of the
Now, let's look at the Microsoft Teams. So, um, the first thing I want you to bear in mind is that Microsoft Teams is um, your productivity um, solution. And then what Microsoft is your, is your productivity solution is a platform for meetings to chat and collaboration. With chat, you can read with meetings, you can, you can enable rich online business experience, you can chat with anybody by using email boxes, by chatting with one another, with rich uh, messaging experience with team chat. You can also collaborate listen to email messages to students. Students of share something, and this is actually back for points they are meant for you to for make and receive all your reports, then you can have some rest of your team. So this is what Microsoft teams for you. Then again, um just like I said. Going forward, this is what I mean. Basically, what your teams look at. You have it on your mobile device, and then you also have it on your um, on your text on your desktop, and you also have it as an app on the web. So your teams allow you to keep in sync with every member of your of your network, your students, you know, your lecturers, and all of that. So that's what my so it provides a central of um, looking at what the Microsoft Businesses Web apps can do, so you have a lot of things. Like I said, a lot of us are actually in, uh, in just to go and examine all of our points. You have a lot of things in PowerPoint, you have Power Apps, you have all of them. So they actually include the flexibility suite of application that can allow you to go to any device. So that's what you play any time. So, looking at what we have in Apple, um, you can see that um, it is used primarily for input and calendar. You have a place to be able to connect to it even on your mobile device. You have a place for you to be able to play your emails to it. You have a place for you to be able to reply or even to send you meetings. And then the cool thing about the Microsoft app is that it comes with a natural language way. So, with a natural language way, Actually, ask questions that they can hear and can do things and they can do the work for you. You can know where you're listening to. You can actually instruct your app, your mobile device, for you to be able to tell you what the next thing is, and then um, you can edit it and then ask the work of the app. So that's what happened. So, the local community is able to do that. So, this is what happened. So, um, just talking about more we have um, we have a different thing with PowerPoint. And actually, we have the PowerPoint allows you to do this. What I'm doing right now is PowerPoint is allowing you to do Then you have the design of the PowerPoint, which allows you. So 
right. So you can imagine this growth in time with a little of build you have the form. This will help you also in the world of what you do. So um moving on Excel is what I thought of the uh, but I still have a from the Lord of the I have a PPT and then to analyze and appreciate data more intelligently. So those are things that you can use. So, um, I just want to run through the slide because of time, and then you have Yama. Two things around Yama is that it's a purpose on the job. So I used to call it out. Face your own private so, and the institution that really is Yama to do it around your teams, it's around uh, the next you can have a discussion, you can share ideas, updates, and reaches for intelligence within the super environment. So, this is part of what Microsoft is happening also offering. So, um, and then you have the Microsoft list. The Microsoft list is a configurable app and it allows you to track um, tasks or processes or assign activities to your colleagues. You can start from anywhere. Because your uh, Microsoft list allows you to do it. Then um, you have. And like I said, I'm not going to talk about too much on this because of size. What to do is the tax one thing happened. It means you to buy this. Now let's see the outcome when you can use that to get things like the bill. I'm sure that for lack of strength, you can use the phones to be able to get some bills and goals and then you can use the share. Then you have Microsoft Streaming, which you can use also for upload videos to Microsoft. Um, you can also upload videos, you know, and then it's like a video of you can call this like a YouTube video. And then so the chat let you have to know that you can use an app, it's also an app with uh, Microsoft 365, but you know what this one is actually the So the can be open to research, even within three years already. So you can do this with that. The name of the power house is for your quality experience, so you can describe what you want to do. Thank you. 
persons. So you cannot have a prison by security aspect. So what it also allows you to be able to security security the option for you to be able to posture of your organization the actions in terms of those who have the ethics and I want to look at the example I'm going to provide you some of those things you know, can take intelligence um, because you can see a lot of how the devices are preparing and how they are exposed to any person to stay so you have all of that and then you have the access to management which allows you to manage your I think I have to enter the question. It's my time. I can just push through the activity of M365. You have the personal productivity and the Is you you have um, you get get on top free on the surface of of, of the air. Uh, so to say, to be productive and use their product, so you can have all of them. Now to leverage on ladies and the certification. I have this thing that you can click for even as I'm presenting. You can actually click to get uh, up to speed on some of the things I've spoken about. And lastly, um, yes, I would take any question if there is any question for now. So thank you so much for having me, and then I will wish you all a very wonderful good uh, calm. And then I want to say thank you to the organizers, to the schools, and then to all the students in this course. So, um, over to you, um, Ola. I have any questions, I can take any, please. Hi, Mokia. Thank you so much for that um, exclusive session. And I'm just going to take one or two questions from the audience, and we can move on to the next session. Right, so I believe we have learned something about Microsoft 365. It's a very important session, a lot to learn and to absorb, especially if this is the first time that get it in our homes. We have the session recorded, and those videos will be available post the boot camp experience for you. But for now, do you have any question about Microsoft 365? Anything to ask, you can take one of the questions from them. Don't forget, we're encouraging to ask questions. We have 20. Microsoft LinkedIn Learning License for, for active participants. So, feel free to ask questions, one or two questions. Then I'm going to ask questions. Right. So, she talked about different applications and services within Microsoft 365. I'm going to call my question and I expect you to just you know, raise up your hand and tell me what the answer is. Which of the application is for social activity within workplace? Which of the applications that she has mentioned is, let's say, Quasi Facebook? All right? What's the name? What's the name? She said, he said what? He said Yama. That Yama is the quasi Facebook. Right, so we have a validation that she got it right, actually, very right. So, round of applause for you. Thank you. What's your name again? Michael. Michael, right. So, we got it right. The experience of Facebook, Twitter within an organization is Yama. That's Microsoft. Yeah, right. So that's one question. 
Another question, do you have a reward, do you have a license already for LinkedIn Learning? We have sponsored by ADC, Microsoft. Right, so the second question that I'm going to ask is, which of these applications is for creating communication site and teams collaboration? Which of these applications is optimized for creating communication sites and uh, collaboration? All right, I have our hands up. So, Tell us your name. Hey, David said Microsoft 360 is for creating site and communications and then driving collaboration with the organization. So, do you want to confirm is the answer correct or not? Okay, so there's something here. He said Microsoft 360, right? So, uh, Jumaka said for Teams collaboration, it is Microsoft Teams. For Teams collaboration, it's Microsoft Teams. But for creating communication site, for creating sites and sharing files and collaborating as well, is SharePoint. So Microsoft SharePoint is optimized for creating sites, either for communication or teams activities and for collaboration. So all of them, there's nothing like Microsoft 360. We have Microsoft 365. The 365 just says it's annual subscription. So it runs 365 days. So that's just what the 365 is. And within that Microsoft 365, there are several applications. We're just touching this again. Thank you so much, David, and thank you, Michael, for that session. A round of applause for them again as we move on to the next. All right, so it's time to have the second session. I'll be bringing on board uh, a, a guest from Australia. I think, you know, she is a very interesting person who has focus and interest in Africa. By name, she is Elaine Yu, a Microsoft with value professional as well. I'm, I mean, she's going to come up now. Hi, Elaine, can you hear me? Say, Ati. Thank you. 
here. First of all, I want to thank Ola and all the organizers for having me today at your university bootcamp. So uh, today I'm going to use these 30 minutes to give you a brief introduction on our platform. So as you can see here, um, instead of using slides, I'm doing something different. I'm going to use PowerX to do my presentation. The difference is I'm going to use PowerX as a slideshow as well. Okay? So I'm just going to play this app. And you see like a slide, but it's actually built on the app. So just a brief introduction of myself. I'm Elaine Yu. You can call me Lainey, or if it's easier, just call me E. I'm a Microsoft application MVP like Ola and many of our other students here. So I'm a Malaysian. I'm from Malaysia, but I'm based in Melbourne. I'm currently living and working in Melbourne as a power platform specialist in the day. And in the night, I'm a power where I start to organize events, attend events, give presentations like you guys, I create content on my YouTube, and a lot of other stuff. Um, but I'm not just on our platform, <laughs> but I'm not doing our platform. I have a family, I have two cute bunnies, so that's how I actually uh, pass my time every day. So if you want to connect with me, this is my LinkedIn and my Twitter. Um, do leave me a message on LinkedIn if you connect with me. Just let me know you can be in this event. And it's just because I get a lot of connections every day. So I don't want to just be this without. And if you're interested in the power of the content, follow me on my YouTube channel. I release uh, videos every few weeks talking about power. So, so um, before I move on, I just want to talk about my, let's show you this other quote, try and fail, I don't fail to try, but you are supposed to get it. So then the people are just like, I think I'd rather try something, learn something new and you know, fail, rather than um, not try it out. So, let me just go on to tell you what I'm going to talk about today. So these are what I'm going to get to in this next 30 minutes. I'm going to go through what is all platform in a nutshell. Then we're going to meet the two, which is the team who are the all platform. And then we're going to meet the family, which is the bigger piece of How that all is part of a bigger family. So I'm going to talk to them as well. And then how all these get all together and work together. And lastly, I'm going to tell you how to get started in this. That's how to get started in our platform. So let's get started. So what is our platform? So all of us know um, in traditional IT space where we all probably come from and a lot of those stuff that you learn is new to you, right? I have really a lot of those are computer science students. Uh, a lot of those are not, if you know in traditional IT, you do things with code like C programming, Python, C plus plus, C sharp. So it takes special kind of skill set and knowledge to build application and it takes a long time to build an application because once you need people with special skills, you need to write a code, you need to learn and develop, etc. Right? But our platform is a local platform, which means that it enables everyone to build an application. All the power platform tools is um, basically a visualization of the and drag and drop. It works simple formulas and it enables you to build apps and different applications that you can use in your day to day or in organization. So, cross platform made up of four different components. We have power apps, power device, power components, and power rotation. We shall talk more later in the next uh, that we have. So, if you look at my picture here, if you can see here, I have a contract framework which is automate, active, act, analyze, digital developer, the local platform. So, those are all the key words of what is called as. So, I would say it's the four A's. It allows you to automate, it allows you to act on it, it's a tool to analyze and practice in day to day and things that we do. So, citizen developer is. Um, Talking about everyday normal people in a business who 
can build all kinds of applications. You can extend your app. You can use logic apps. You can use uh, Azure Data Lake. You can use all kinds of services that we provided there to build enterprise application. And next, you have your Office 365. So everyone knows Office 365. You use Word, Excel, PowerPoint, today. Oh, you all read emails day to day. So these are your productivity tools. And again, you can connect your app to tools to give users uh, a kind of experience, right? So you can emails, you connect your banners, document that please add to it. All through that. Using your own Now, on top here, application that you look tools that you have at the three layer and bottom. And the next is the first and the manual three layer. These are the first one that um that is. So, if you have any other Education, right? So there's already a case of education best practice you can use. So this is minimum operation budget. And then you also have the ISP, so ISP products, apps that you built. Again, based on industry base that you can use. For example, if you need it's interest very passionate about normal we get an ISP we can application for normal voting for donation we can distribute it to other people for them to use them you can try to add to the operating system for business requirement you can yes which is what we talked about just now so Thank you. 
said unto me, right? Eileen, I want you to quick confirm. Chatbots, do you use automate?
Thank you. 
because you don't have. So that's right here. It's something by land you on a place like this. So you have to. That's it to sign me. So, I mean, I, I hope you have gone through this. Microsoft account. But if you don't have, that's a major issue here. You have to go and create, create an account. Yeah. Create one. But I can't walk you through this thing because if you, if you make me have created multiple Microsoft accounts, I don't even want to keep creating. So, if I click on this create one, I just create a Microsoft account for you, either Outlook. Or ultimately, you see the options here. That's if you don't have Microsoft accounts. So the challenge here is every time it's logging in, in because I have my accounts that by default already here. So this one now, so I have to sign out before I can walk you through those process. So the developer account is a bit of how to sign out. So back here now to this screen you have to create if you don't have outlook account or that you have to create one I hope we are following that instruction now I don't need to guide you through if you don't have any just you know create one fraction for your name your details just go through that process and create an outlook account just to go to your password so when you create also set password so go to password but this is the page where you actually need to now use those details to sign in Microsoft 
Right, so we're going to use because she has an empty financial um, account. For me, I already have all my account linked, but she has one. She has one. So let's just go to the next. account. If you have linked it, you buy a new it today and you use your Gmail as your, as your registered. So meaning that TV is already natural account. And when you try to log in here, it says cannot recognize, meaning it's not the natural account. So if Gmail is a registered natural account, then you try to log in and that developer program. So we are signing now the natural account, then it's easier for us to then join. I want to believe all the instructions that have digression, you use that to create at least an outlook account for yourself. Now, I've just asked the people who are here. 
subscription e5 is the highest of the microsoft licenses e1 e3 e5 so this already gives you access to e5 which has power bi in it has all the application we're going to talk about and many others so when you click on set up subscription this is where you will create the login details to be using going forward the previous one which is your personal outlook is just your personal outlook this is the one that will grant you access to all this application we'll be discussing right so Nigeria, yes, then create username. I have to create username for myself. I'm going to call myself Ola Charles. Create domain. This is where you need a domain. So if you look at it right here, it's also compulsory. So as you are typing domain, you can see Ola Charles, that's my username, at company.omicsoft.com. So the domain name I create, which is just, I call my FBA bootcamp. So, I can't take the same thing, by the way. If I put my Azebe bootcamp, bootcamp and you try it, it won't work. So it has to be unique. So you can personalize it, personalize it. You can say, call it your name. You can call this your name. As simple as maybe your first name, your last name. If you call it your first name, if you have another person here, then the same name, you might not be able to use it again. So maybe some name works, or you can add numbers to it. So I'm just going to call this F U L. And you see, as I'm typing it, the domain is adding, is appending that domain to email address so fuel boot camp so after you can see now it's now longer it's email now is now it has checked it is available or large charts at fuel bootcamp.com that's the email i'll be using and i have to set up my password now So the next is we are done. I'm going to click on continue. So because it's a valid account, even though it's for learning purpose, it's not for commercial purpose. Don't run organizations with it. It takes for one year or you know renewable every three months. 
So don't just run your organization on this. Go for full license. But for you to learn, if you assume you are in an organization and you can have access to all the applications you need. So you need phone number as well to validate, verify. I'm going to put my number. So I'm going to send a code to my phone number, my phone. Is anyone on this same page? Have you received the code? What's the challenge? I'm too fast. Apologies. Is it possible to go back? Yes. I need to add. Okay. I will do audio as soon. Okay. Have you created the Microsoft 365? So you're on that, um, configure the subscription, something like that, you're on that page. Have you seen the button? So I can do audio because I won't be able to go back there. So when you click on, is it configure if I subscription? So when you click on that button, it's going to pop up something similar to this. But rather we ask you for username, which is the name you want to use. Don't make it too long, you can put in your name, anything. Then it's going to ask you for a domain. And I said the domain is just like a company name so that you belong to that organization. Call it either a company name you have as an idea or, a, a, or your name or your son name. But it must be unique. No, two people cannot use it. So put that there. That is all. Actually, if you're okay, then you click on next. When you click on next, you will be on this same page with me. Still waiting for the code. See here. Code you have to retype your phone number. So, retype the phone number. Okay, okay. You have a challenge, right? Problem, yeah. Okay, so thank you. So someone with sim um, similar challenge said he has to retype his phone number and click on send code again. It's more uh, than Has anyone got in the code? Or has anyone got to this page? Do you have it now? Yeah. Grab the code. Wow. 
So uh, thank you so much, sir. So we got okay. information that it's actually MTN network. So if you have another line that low enter and put the phone number, luckily you can go almost immediately. So please attend that. Unfortunately, you can't. So people have been receiving the code. Good news. When we don't tell you monitoring me that I've created too much of that. I mean, if um, Microsoft will actually network free, so please try another phone number. If you have another line, just put it there. You should get the code almost immediately. So, for those who are, the subscription is active and it's for 90 days. So, you get renewed. Not to do anything they might not be need. It's for learning purpose. So, at least. You should be able to in three months do something. So we get renewed up to one year. And if it expires, if they need renew again, they always create another one. It's not any purpose. So you then should go to office.com. After if you have gotten the code and you are set up now, please go to office.com and log in. Log in with the same details, which is the email account you have created here and your password. And that way we can then start and power our session. You know, sometimes we hope we will have more days for this bootcamp. We will have dealt with this better. But, and if we had all of the social power to the bootcamp, we will have so much issue as well. But of course, these are things that we planned. So, we are about starting now. I have instructed that I should log into office.com. Ibrahim is on the call. Because I've not got any food, so we need to proceed. Hi, Ibrahim. Can you hear me? I'm bringing you up now. Apologies for the delay. Yeah, I really apologize. You're on mute. Hello, Ibrahim. Can you hear me? Are you there? Okay, great. So please, well, as you start your session, just you will share your screen, logging into Office Portal, so that I can locate uh, maybe power apps from there, so that they can use that in case there is there's anyone that's not logged in there. Right. So I will I will add it over to you now, so that we can take the um, the class from from your hand. Right, so I'm going to welcome uh, Ibrahim Ido. He is an experienced Microsoft Power Apps developer and consultant. And he has done a couple of things like this, but I mean, I don't have enough time to explain, but he's going to do justice to that. So, Ibrahim, please you tell us really about yourself while you um, take the session. Okay, thank you. Um, I want to confirm.
We can't hear you. I can see your screen. I can see your screen. Just that I can't hear you. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Okay, awesome, awesome. Thank you. Uh, and um, I want to thank the I also want to thank you for this opportunity. Okay. But is it better? Okay, hold on. Okay. So, as I was saying, I said, um, pleasure to be here. I, um, I, want to, I want to appreciate the, the lecturers and the city and the citizens to make this today here to give you to give that. Very, very important. Um, and yeah, because of that, my main thing is to, uh, oh, you know, yes, uh, I think that 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 Okay, so I will raise my phone and so that can hear me. Okay. Yes, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So can I go ahead? Let me put them down here. Okay. So is it better this way? Okay, okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so because of time constraints, I I'll just limit my listen. So so this is me. Um, um, I'm Idowi Brian by name. Yes, um, I'm an engineer, yes. And I'm some certified, certified trainer. And you can find these details online, right? So I've actually done quite a number of processes, you know, um, say hundreds of uh, business process automations. So um, I'm glad to be sharing my, my little experience with you guys today. Okay, so in this in this session, so we're just gonna briefly look at what, what you can do with power apps. Right? So we're just gonna look at what you can do with power apps. Everything that has been explained to us by the previous uh, facilitators. So power apps allow you to build low, low or no code solutions. And uh, before I proceed, I would like to show you something. I'd like to show you an application briefly. There is no thing. So, can you come back to the next? 